picnic interrupted. One moment, the glowing yellow picnic table was surrounded by lush green jungle. The next, by the jeers and screams of an insatiable crowd. Elena leapt to her feet, absolution in hand and fire in her eyes. Aita grinned and clapped his hands. Hugh dropped his sandwich. Mk sighed. Actually, I don't remember what it was. Mac? Mick? I don't remember. Anthony rose calmly. It seems that an encore is in order, my friends. So it is Cargo Warfang against Captain Cosmic, the Argent Adept, Fanatic, Tempest, and Haka in Insula Primalis. And it's not a random start. You ended up getting near mint. You are so bad at this game. Well, we'll see how bad I am. Come and fight for my pleasure! Are you worthy, combatants? Find out! For glory! Your evil doing days are numbered, no matter how dangerous you are! Have at them, allies! Actually, if Captain Cosmic were bald, he would be, um. Uh, Heisenberg. Your evil doing days are numbered, no matter how dangerous you are! I am the one who knocks! Okay. <laughs> We have a Cosmic Crest, so again, I don't know Captain Cosmic that well still. Uh, Captain Cosmic and all Construct cards are immune to energy damage, power up to three Construct cards, you gain two HP each. A destructive response, the first time a Construct card is destroyed each turn, Captain Cosmic may deal up to three targets, one energy damage each. Energy Bracer, play next to a hero character card, reduce damage dealt to that hero character card by one, and Potent Disruption, destroy one Construct card. If you do, Captain Cosmic deals one target energy damage equal to the HP of the destroy Construct card plus one. Argent Adept has a Sadistic Dissonant, Counterpoint, Bulwark, Inspiring Supertonic, and Silver Shadow. Fanatic has a Divine Focus, Divine Sacrifice, Final Dive, and Prayer of Desperation. Tempest has Aquatic Correspondence, Flash Flood, Into the Stratosphere, and Lightning Slash. And Haka has Dominion, Savage Mana, Tayaha, and Taomoko. So, Cargo Warfang at the start of the game. Things, cards revealed from the top of the villain deck until one gladiator is revealed and put to play, and the other revealed cards return to the villain deck, which is shuffled. At the start of the villain turn, she flips if there are no gladiators in play. At the end of the villain turn, the top card of the villain deck is played. I don't remember what my settings were. I think they might still be on card display time max, which is fine, because then I can read these cards. Provocator Tarnus. The first time a villain target other than this card would be dealt damage each turn, redirect that damage to this card. At the end of the villain turn, this card deals the hero target with the highest HP to melee damage. Okay. So if we're going to be doing only one source of damage in a turn, it's going to be to this card. <sighs> And in the title that enters play, The Living Weapon, when a hero destroys a target using their innate power, put this card under that hero's character card, covering everything above this line. Increase damage dealt by this hero's innate power by two. Ooh. That is good for Fnatic and Tempest. Probably really want that on Tempest somehow. We have the Trigon Rex. At the end of the villain turn, this card deals the three hero targets with the highest HP, one fire damage, one cold damage, and one toxic damage each. And then the end of turn card play. Dermkarn the Fearless. At the end of the villain turn, this card deals the two hero targets with the highest HP, three lightning damage each. Whenever this card is dealt damage, this card becomes immune to damage for the rest of the current turn. So that's not as bad of a start as I was expecting. <laughs> and this doesn't matter. <laughs> the bugged card, indeed. Did you get an Argent Adept for the lulls? The the best strat needs to be for Argent Adept. Like, the fastest strat needs to be for Argent Adept to get it so that, you know, it only works before the next patch. Oh, and they got a title for doing damage, I think. Multiple targets, three, yeah. So what was this again? It was when you deal two or more damage at once to multiple of the opposite in a single turn, or you deal in a single source for more damage, or you destroy a non-hero or non-villain, or you gain a title card. So no one has claimed this yet. So I would like I would like Tempest to get it, but I don't think that's going to happen. But doing three damage to everything is cool. Or Fnatic can get it, because six damage to one target is cool. Alright. Um, 
These guys aren't doing energy damage, so Cosmic Crest isn't really doing that much just yet. How much energy damage does he deal himself? Does he deal damage to himself? I don't think he does. Unless, you know, we want to get the wounding buffer out at the same time as unflagging animation, but that's psychic damage, so he's still hitting himself, but at least the construct wouldn't hit himself. Uh, so I feel like Cosmic Crest, I mean, it does allow for HP regeneration on constructs, but I don't feel like that's going to be so useful right now. Destructive response and potent disruption require constructs to be up. So I believe Energy Bracer is the card we want to play. The question is, which do we want to put it on? This is highest HP, this is highest HP, this is highest HP. So getting it on whoever's the highest HP is a good idea. Um, but Haka and Tempest both have cards that allow for HP reduction, and so does Fnatic. But Argent Adept doesn't. So I'm going to put this on Argent Adept for no reason. <laughs> And then reveal the top card of my deck. It's a Vitality Conduit. Play this card next to a target. Whenever this card is dealt damage, that target regains 2 HP. Sure. Who wants it? I'm pretty sure Fnatic doesn't. I mean, Tempest has, like, group HP recovery, Haka has local HP recovery, Fnatic likes to be low, and Argent's Dept has HP recovery, so sort of Captain Cosmic, so I'm gonna put on Captain Cosmic. I could also put on Energy Bracer, I guess. And then we draw another Conservation of Energy. Or no, that's our first Conservation of Energy. We can destroy any number, and then we can draw X or play X. Alright. So, so far we've not really made much progress on, you know, getting points. Um, I could counterpoint Bulwark. If I counterpoint Bulwark... I can reduce damage dealt to Tempest and Haka by one, and then the Tyragon Rex is not going to be able to deal damage to those. Uh, and Provocator Tarnus is only going to do one. However, Demkarn the Fearless is still going to do two and two. Provide it. Well, no. I could do it. Do I want to do that? I normally inspiring Super Tonic, but I don't know. Like, the goal is to get favor, it's not just to destroy targets. And although I would like to get Tempest's title, or someone's title, right? I would like someone to get this title before someone else does, although this is a hero thing, right? Uh, yeah, this is... This is whenever a hero destroys a target. So only heroes can get it, so it's not really like a mad rush to get it. Um... So I think I'm gonna go for defense. Because this will also help with uh, things. <laughs> so Tempest and Haka. And I draw an Instrumental Conjuration. Alright, so Fnatic. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Final Dive is not going to do anything. Divine Focus. I want to keep that for Cargo Warfang, I think. Divine Sacrifice. No, because I'm trying to get things to hit other things. The only thing would be like Prayer of Desperation and draw three cards. I could do one and one, but again, it's like pointless. <laughs> I mean, taking out a target does get you hero favor. As I learned in my game on Thursday, though, getting yourself a lot of favor isn't really that good when they play the card that swaps the highest four points. <laughs> well, let's get cards. Because I don't think two damage is going to make a difference at all. We draw an Undaunted. And a Divine Focus, number two. And a Sanctifying Strike. 
Alright, so I can get a favor if I play Lightning Slash. I can enter the stratosphere to freeze one of her two plays. Rename Fickle Fans to Twitch chat. <laughs> and the card text should say Kappa Kappa OP OP. What am I trying to do here? I don't really know what I'm trying to do. I just played cards and now I feel like I'm four heroes in and I'm like, hey, I don't really know what to do, so I'm going to play this card. Uh, Alright, these are all one shots, so as far as setup goes, there's not really much of a point. Um, if I enter the stratosphere, I'm going to hit the highest for four, two. Well, the thing is, I. So I think I want Haka to play Tomoko? No, actually, I don't need to do that. I can play Taiaha. And then I can get a point? No, because it's going to redirect. Well, no, I guess it's fine. I can still get the hero favor point. On the other hand, I could have both of those hits go to Provocator Tarnus and then he takes six damage. So if I Lightning Slash, then that will be five. Five plus six is eleven, and then I can do two of the projectile hits on him. So he's down to the five. So the question is, can I somehow get enough damage on him to kill him with Tempest? I think I can, actually. When a hero destroys the target using their innate power. Alright, so we can... I think we can get that set up. I think. Oh, actually, I can't redirect this hit now. Or no, I still can. So which one... will hit that guy. That redirected, and now that one would hit, obviously, him, and then this one hits Dimkarn. He's immune to damage until the end of Tempest's turn. Oh, darn. And another aquatic correspondence. When they finally make it so you can customize game files, that's the first thing you're changing. <laughs> I think if I would change a card, it'd be Whispers of Oblivion into Whispers of Oblivion. Although I'm not sure that's what it's supposed to be, or could be, but... Alright, so as I said, tie ha and then we're going to redirect one of these hits. And we get a Dominion! Velociraptor, Velociraptor Pack. At the end of the environment turn, this card deals the non-environment target with the lowest HP, X melee damage, where X is the number of Velociraptor Packs in play, times two, and that's Provocator Tarnus. So he takes a free two. No, no, never mind. Just kidding. Raffle JK. Who is this next to? <laughs> it's next to Captain Cosmic. So if he hit, if he gets hit, he'll be tied for highest. Is, was that a big deal? We put the Vitality Bracer. Or, or, no, or never mind. Yeah, well, uh, the <laughs> words. I have no idea what I'm saying. Uh, Vitality Bracer is on Argent Adept. So I think the goal was for him to be considered third highest. So I think I don't want to have Captain Cosmic regain HP, so I want to hit the Energy Bracer. Fwa. And the Seeker. When a target damages another target that has a damage reducing effect, put this card under that target that dealt damage, covering everything above this line. When this target deals damage to a target, increase the next damage dealt to that target by two. So currently, uh... Uh-oh. Well, you know all that fun damage reduction things we got set up? Yeah. Uh, I think Provocator Tarnus is going to get this, actually, because he's going to hit Haka. Or... He's going to hit either Haka or Tempest, and he's going to get the title. One shot. Reveal the villain. Shuffle the villain trash and reveal cards from the top until two gladiator cards are revealed. Put them into play and put the other revealed cards back into the villain trash. Then, if Karkor Warfang is not a target, flip her character card. Okay, never mind. She's going to uh, do things. I think she might get this because she hits the uh, highest. Yep. So this screws up everything. God damn it. Good going. GG. Alright, so now every time Cargo Warfang deals damage, increase the next damage dealt to that target by two! Woohoo! 
Yes, wait a minute, indeed. <laughs> and then we get the top card of the villain deck again. Or I'm hive mind. At the end of the villain turn, this card deals the hero target with the highest HP for melee damage. Then add one token to the Blood Sworn Favor pool for each environment card in play. Thanks. That's so useful. Um, I don't even care anymore because it's, it's going to be sucky anyway. Actually, I can destroy it by destroying an instrument. I'm gonna have to do that like ASAP. Because I really don't want Carver Warfang to increase damage dealt to things by two. Alright. So, how am I. I have to set this up so that Tempest takes out the Provocator Tarnus. I can destroy one construct like the Energy Bracer or the Vitality Conduit and then I can deal four energy damage to him and then I'm good provided that um <laughs> so what does fanatic have we have if i can ping velociraptor pack for one then i can final dive it into provocator tarnus although the velocir well the velociraptor pack is nice until you know orm hive minded is out if I want to get Sadistic Dissonant going, I need to play that and Instrumental Conjuration. So we're going to destroy Cargra's title on our next turn on Tempest. Um, into the Stratosphere is not going to select it. And those other cards aren't going to help. So... So how are, so what's the best option here? So I don't really want a final dive if I can avoid it, because the Velociraptor packs are most likely gonna go against gladiators, and that would help a lot. So do I destroy Vi like the easiest choice would be to destroy Vitality Conduit. Oh no, I can't, because this is 4 plus 1. So I could... <laughs> oh, you know what I can do? I can destroy the Energy Bracer. And I can do 3 to Provocator Tarnus. Actually, no, wait. Because Fanatic's power is 1 and 1. And Sanctifying Strike is going to do 1, 2, right? Deal 1 target, 1 melee damage... I could also Divine Sacrifice, I guess. And that would do two. Divine Sacrifice to get two onto Provocator Tarnus by the redirection. And then Base Power takes it down to one. And then Squall takes him out. I just have to be careful, you know, that... Well... Okay, I can still do, like, Counterpoint Bulwark, I guess. Um... So I don't have to Potent Disrupt. I would rather get out the ongoings that react to Construct cards getting destroyed since they chain with the cards that say destroy any number uh, or destroy one. So I think we'll play Destructive Response. And then we will reveal the top card of my deck. It's a Cosmic Weapon. Play this card next to a hero character card. That hero gains the following power. Power. This, card deal this hero deals one target three energy damage. Huh. So that's weaker than Tayaha. Um, if Tempest gets the title, then his power is going to be weaker than this. And this is... Fnatic has, you know, her weapon that's the same as this. So... This could go on Argent Adept, but he's not going to use it right away. And I could put it on Captain Cosmic, but I like revealing the top card of my deck since it lets me get two cards out per turn. So I think Argent Adept is probably the best choice for this. And then we draw an unflagging animation. 
Alright, so part one, sadistic dissonant. And then, uh, no, we'll activate the perform text again. Select up the two targets. Oh shit, oh, I keep forgetting Velociraptor Pack's going after constructs. Why did I forget about that? I guess I'm flash flooding them. Um, well, yeah, because I forgot about the constructs. Again, even though, you know, first round, the Velociraptor Pack went against the construct, and then I proceeded to forget about it back after Cosmic's turn. Uh, so Cargo Warfang is hitting who and who? Highest HP and second highest HP? Although whoever's the second highest HP is not going to be who the second highest HP is by now. Uh, but I think that, you know, unless the environment does something, the first one's going Argent Adept. So... So, for Shiggles, we'll put one on Argent Adept. No. Never mind, I don't want to do that. We'll just do the same thing I did last time, Haka and Tempest. And then we get an Electric Subdominant, so we can get more card plays eventually, if I can get that out. Alright, so Divine Sacrifice to redirect to Provocator Targus. Tarnus. And then Provocator Tarnus. And I can hit the Velociraptor pack, and then it will hit Fnatic, so I don't have to worry about taking them out. Alright. I used Divine Sacrifice for its damage redirection for once. Alright, and then hit Provocator Tarnus. And Provocator Tarnus. And now we're set up for Squall to take him out. Oh, and we draw an Aegis of Resurrection. Alright, so I don't need a Flash Flood after all. I could into the Stratosphere... It would hit Hargo Cargo Warfang. I think I want to <laughs> wait until I get Gene Bound Shackles. So I'm going to Aquatic Correspond. We get a Reclaim from the Deep. Cleansing Downpour. And another Reclaim from the Deep. Alright, so now I'm going to hit Provocator Tarnus first. I destroyed something with my innate power, so now I have the living weapon. Woohoo! And a target was destroyed, so the top card of the title deck enters play, which is after a target is dealt six or more damage in one turn, put this card under that target, covering everything above this line. If this target would be reduced to zero or fewer HP, it instead regains six HP and destroys this card. And now this is doing three damage to everything. Ha 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 ha. Uh, don't care. <laughs> You're immune to damage. Sweet. And we get a localized hurricane. Which its damage effect is now worse than Squall. But its card draw is pretty powerful. Oh man. Alright, so Velociraptor Pack is targeting Fnatic. But on the other hand, I, the ore I'm hive minded is going to add one to the Blood Sworn Pool. Mm -hmm. I could get Talmoko. Because there is going to be quite a bit of damage going around. So let's do that. I guess the card play doesn't fully matter. So do I destroy the Velociraptor pack or do I set up for Tempest to kill Durkim the Fearless? Well, I think I should. I mean, I have two hits. So there's that. And then... Yeah, well, we should, you know, beat up Karko Warfang because reasons. In fact, I have to villain. Tar I have to hit villain targets with this in order to get favor, so that's a good plan. And Drowned Pound is good to draw, so we can freeze the next round. Velociraptor Pack, uh, an Obsidian Field. Cool. So now all damage is increased by one. We get 
Reckless. When a target deals itself three or more damage in one turn, put this card under that target covering everything above this line. The first time this target is dealt damage each turn, this target regains one HP. Mm. So... Fickle fans. Move five tokens from the favor pool with the most tokens to the favor pool with the fewest tokens, which is Blood Sworn to me! Yay! I am predicting the next card is also going to be Fickle Fans completely undoing this! Who's considered to have the highest HP? Uh, whoever it gets hit is going to also increase the next damage by two. But you're not going to be second highest. So let's hit Argent Adept since he has some HP recovery. And then he hits Captain Cosmic. Play the top card of the villain deck. Each player destroys one of their ongoing or equipment cards. Flip the top card of the title deck and put it under the villain target with the highest HP with the title effect still visible. If there are no villain targets in play, discard it. So it's going underneath Cargo Warfang. You get another free title. Or I guess it's not another one, but... Alright, so we're destroying Destructive Response. And in order for me to destroy titles, I need to keep Sadistic Dissonance. So goodbye, Counterpoint Bulwark. And Tamoko or Taiaha. Uh, Taiaha is pretty good, so I think I'm going to lose Tamoko. Got the champion. Damage dealt by this target is irreducible! Well, at least we got rid of most of the damage reduction we had going on, so it's fine. Also, this is doing lots of damage because of Obsidian Field, as well as the Seeker! Oh, but I got a title. I got dealt six or more damage in one round, that's what happened. So now when I get down when I get down to zero, I come back into life. Yeah. That's something. And then this is going to get him that title. At least the counterpoint bulwark prevented them from getting titles for doing four damage, but then this guy's gonna get it. Uh, so you get the one for that, and then you get two for the environment, so... This is fun. So I don't want to deal myself two, en two energy damage at the end of my turn. I mean, there's not even a construct in here, so there's no point. Destroy any number of constructs, and then draw three, draw four, play four, or up to four, rather. Uh, Captain Cosmic and all construct cards are immune to energy damage. Um... Hmm... Deal one target, energy damage equal to the HP of the destroyed construct card plus one. So I know what I'm doing on my turn. I'm playing Instrumental Conjuration and I'm destroying one of these things. Probably the one that increases the next damage dealt to that target by one. Because these cards are not indestructible, right? Uh, when this card and the crowd's favor are indestructible, but that's fine. Uh, Title cards are not hero, villain, or environment cards. Whenever a title card is discarded or destroyed, shuffle it into the vi villain deck. But... Destroy any one card in play other than a character card. So I should be able to destroy it with Sadistic Dissonant. And I could, you know, have... Um, reclaim from the Deep to get that instrument back. So we can, like, d keep destroying villain title cards pretty freely. Which can help a bit. Um, anyway, what am I planning on doing? So, Tempest is going to take out Demkarn the Fearless. Getting damage on Cargo Warfang would be nice. We have Vitality Conduit in play. We also have Energy Bracer and Cosmic Weapon. I could destroy Cosmic Weapon since it's currently not really doing anything. Uh, move one... No, not that one. Destroy one, so four plus one plus one is six. So I can do six to Cargo Warfang. This current title is what? When a target deals itself three or more damage in one turn. Um, I, uh, <laughs> Fanatic could probably get that one if she had her card, but she doesn't currently. I think we're going to Divine Focus on Fanatic's end. Or, I know what Argent Adept is doing. I could Divine Focus, because this is going to do 2 plus 1, which is 3, and her base power is going to do 2 and 2, and Tempest power is going to do 4 to everyone. Damn, Tempest is going to get us a lot of points. So we really need to get out Cargo Warfang somehow. 
So I think I'm going to potent disrupt the cosmic weapon. We destroyed a target, so a title enters play. When a villain deals damage to multiple hero targets and multiple villain targets in the same turn, increase damage dealt by this target by one. Hmm. But we'll hit Cargo Warfang and we'll get a title. Or not a title, a the thingy. Top card of my deck is a sustained influence, so we'll put that in play. I would have liked to have had that, but whatever. We get another energy bracer. I am not discarding two cards. Uh, so, instrumental conjuration. Search my deck for any instruments. I mean, I could try to get out Musar Musaragni's harp, except the power is going to expire before... Like, I'll activate the perform text that says destroy an instrument. So the rest of it's not going to matter. It's the perform of harmony. And nothing else does perform of harmony other than the harp and the lyra. So let's just put the, the harp out. We get a Rhapsody of Vigor. And now we'll try to harmonize. Destroy Musaragni's harp. Destroy the title on Cargo Warfang, wherever it is. When this target deals damage to target, increase the next damage dealt to the target by two. It has been destroyed! Woohoo! And we can draw another instrumental conjuration so we could do it again next round for free! Do I want to discard two cards? No. So I still think I want to Divine Focus. And then I will hit Cargo Warfang. Yeah, Velociraptor Pack's gonna die on this turn anyway. We get a final dive. I suppose I could have final dived the other thing, but whatever. Tempest is gonna get rid of it anyway. I am not discarding two cards. So discard a card. Um. I'll lose one of the final dives. I could into the stratosphere something. Actually, well... Mm -hmm. Reclaim from the deep lets me get an instrument back, right? Well, I could, re I could reclaim an instrumental conjuration. That would be good. So I'm doing that. Choose for me. So what do we want on the top of Captain Cosmic's deck? No, or not Divine Sacrifice. Uh, whatever it was. Divine Focus. That was the, That's the right Divine. Put the Prayer of Desperation on top. And Lightning Slash, because that's a lot of damage. Taomoko? I don't think it matters. I can Ground Pound! Uh, Prayer of Desperation, I think, is wise, because then I can still Divine Sacrifice, or not Divine Sacrifice, uh, whatever it was, Divine Focus. That was the, That's the right Divine. Put the Prayer of Desperation on top, and... Lightning Slash, because that's a lot of damage. Taomoko? I don't think it matters. I can Ground Pound this next round. That would be useful. I don't know. We'll put Taomoko on top, I guess. We draw the Lightning Slash. And now I can destroy Durkharm the Fearless. So what titles are still left? I want I don't want something that's going to react to damage I'm dealing unless it's good. When a player plays three cards in one turn, uh Argent Adept could try to set up for that. If this game lasts long enough. After a target destroys a target without dealing damage to it. Whenever this target reduces another target to three or fewer HP, destroy that target. When a target enters play, put this card under that target. Hmm. When a target is dealt damage by five different sources in one round, the first time this target is dealt damage each turn, this target deals each target one psychic damage. When a target damages another target that has a damage reducing effect, which is what was under Cargo Warfang. Currently, the only damage reduction is on Argent Adept still, though. When a target damages another target that has a damage reducing effect. If that enters play, I think I'm going to have to hit. Argent Adept. 
with Tamoko, or not Tamoko, uh, Tayaha, assuming it enters play. But none of these seem to react to, um... Like, the only thing that reacts badly would be a card, a target entering play, which I can't control. So I'm gonna hit Dimkarn first. So we get one for dealing four damage to another for destroying the target, and the Bloodsworn Coliseum plays a new title. When a target is dealt damage by five different sources in one round, put this card under that target. And then this is also going to put a title into play, right? Uh, so we now have, after a target destroys a target without dealing damage to it, put this card under the surviving target. And we get more favor. In fact, we're going to keep getting favor because these are all fours. So, we have 20. I just have to destroy Cargo Warfang. And we've won. No, I'm not discarding two cards. And... Who's the highest? Cargo's still the highest, so... Uh... Yeah, I don't think it really matters. But I hold on I'll hold on the final di final dive. I think Divine Focus, I'm gonna deal myself the damage. Cause I'm gonna play ground pound, so Fnatic should not be dealing be getting dealt damage. Uh we'll play ground pound. Uh either discard two cards. Yes, I wanna discard two cards. I'll lose both of the dominions. And then I can tie a ha. And then I'll hit Kargra, which gets me another favor. And then I can hit Tarragon Rex, which gives me another favor, in fact, two favors, and then Talmoko. And no, I'm not discarding two. And we are discarding the Aegis. And we get another Velociraptor pack, which cannot deal damage. A new title enters. When a target enters play, put this card under that target covering everything above this line. Reduce damage dealt to this target by one. So of course it's going to be the next gladiator that enters play. Uh, but we can still... Final dive... not final dive. Sanctifying strike to hit Kargra. Gladiator enters play. Move five tokens from the favor pool with the most to the fewest. Uh, so blood swarms up to 15. We're down to 18. So we're not going to win immediately. But it's probably going to happen soon, still. Uh, we have the Soul Slayer Parath. At the end of the Valen turn, this card deals the non-villain target with the lowest HP to infernal damage. Whenever a target is destroyed by this card, this card deals each non-villain target to infernal damage. Thankfully, villain targets cannot deal damage. So now... Oh, and you have the, the thing. Huh. So that... Um, do we have the thing for damage reduction out? No. That was the one that Kargra had, which we destroyed. When a target damages another target, that has a damage reducing effect. So currently, um, Divine Focus is going to hit Soul Slayer Parath. Oh, and we're tied. Damn. Oh, right, because of the Orem Hive Minded. I never actually destroyed that. That almost cost me the game. Uh, it, turns it, ended, uh, it gave two more favors. But... So, hmm. I don't think I want to discard the card because it's only going to hit Soul Slayer Parath. So I'm going to skip. Destroy any number of constructs. First time a construct is destroyed, I can destroy this card to put it back into play. So that would allow me to destroy more. Um, at the end of your turn, Captain Cosmic deals himself one irreducible psychic at the start of your turn, so it's not going to act immediately. So I need to figure out how to win fast. Um, None of these cards really are going to help with that, though. Um, I 
If I play Inspiring Super Tonic and then I have Tempest use the power, I should win. Because I will hit Cargo Warfang. I dealt 4 damage to her, so I get a favor, and I destroyed a target, so I get a favor. So I don't think it matters then. But just to be cool. What are these? These are. When a target deals itself three or more damage. When a target deals damage to multiple hero targets and multiple villain targets. When a target is dealt damage by five different sources. A target destroys a target without dealing damage to it. So. Ha 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 Yeah, we'll lose the energy bracer. I destroyed a target without dealing damage to it, so I got death caller. And a target was destroyed, so a title enters play. When a player plays three cards in one turn. Oh my Ha 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 ha! Oh my god, I can get this title too. When a construct card is destroyed, I may destroy this card to put that construct back into play. Uh, I don't particularly care, so no. Oh, I guess I could have. Shit. Well, no. I, I'm going to destroy this. Because I wanted to put it back into play, because then I could destroy it, and then I could play more. But no, I can destroy two constructs. Actually, I only have to destroy one. Because now I can play two cards. X is the number of constructs destroyed this way with plus one. I destroyed one. One plus one is two, so I can still play two cards. And I'll have played three cards in one round. Although, I, it, al it always like only starts counting from when the card entered play. So yeah, I have to destroy another one in order to really get that. So I'll destroy this one too. And I destroyed a target, so a title enters play. When a target damages another target, that is a damage reducing effect. Put this card in the. Okay. Cool. Uh, do I want to destroy sustained influence? Uh. What was the one I destroyed? I don't even remember. It was the thing. Ugh. Energy Bracer. No. It's still being destroyed. I don't care. No. It's not gonna matter. I just want to be cool. Play three. So Cosmic Crest, an Energy Bracer on someone like Argent Adept, and now I got Chaos Lord. All right, cool. So now whenever I'm dealt damage, we play the bottom card of my deck. So oh yeah, and flagging. <laughs> yes, on flagging animation is gonna hit myself, and then I'm gonna play the bottom card of my deck. Woohoo! Real top card of my deck. It is. A destructive response, which is not in play, so I can put it in play. And then I draw a wounding buffer. I hit myself. So the bottom card of my deck enters play. I hit myself for three or more, so I got another title. <laughs> oh, and now we're at 21 favor. <laughs> That's funny. Alright, so what's left? Deal damage to multiple hero and multiple villains when a target is dealt damage by five different sources and when we hit something with a damage reducing effect. Alright, whenever this card is dealt damage, that hero may use a power. Hmm. I don't think it really matters. Argent's Adept is always the cool choice. Discard a card that does not... Oh, I can't actually discard a card and I'll get the favor. So we'll discard Undaunted. Because now we'll hit Soul Slayer Sarath, or Parath, and we get this title Seeker. <laughs> I'm just being cute right now. Um, I don't think there's a way of dealing damage to multiple heroes and multiple villains. And I don't think I can really set this up because that's a lot of sources to try to get to deal damage. So I think it's I think it's time to call it a day an inspiring supertonic for the victory. But we will try to get most favors.
This is not going to be a favor. Although, I should get one, right? No, it won't. Yay! Double Fickle fans took the win from you. So, I sort of feel like... With Fickle fans, the goal isn't really to stay in the lead. The goal is to set up to be in a, it behind, you know. Be in the be behind, but make sure that the villain doesn't win. And then fickle fans gets played and you get four favor from the villains, which you know, ignoring the fact that you have to be 20 or higher to win, you basically gain 8 points on the villains. Like fickle fans, like if fickle fans weren't Yeah, if Fickle fans weren't a thing, then you certainly would want it to be a race with the villains to gain as much favor as possible. But with Fickle fans, like, you... you don't really want to play cards. Now, if you know that both Fickle fans have been played already, or you know where they are, uh, then you can, of course, go chasing for favors, but... Fickle fans is just like... it, it sort of, like, turns this game from a race into a be careful sort of thing. So I was worried when I saw this because I think I read on the Kickstarter comments like I think someone asked like or one of the the either Jeremy or John I don't know who but they posted from the Handelabra account said oh yeah I need to design this week's one shot any ideas and someone said something about Kagura Warfang where the first card it puts Kagura into f into play, and the second card is to reveal the top card of the title deck and put it underneath the villain target with the highest HP, and the t card that enters play is the one that says when a the first time that target is dealt damage each turn, uh, that target hits everything for one? No. I don't think it was that one. I think it was... I mean, I could just look this up, but... Nope, I just had it. I just had it. I clicked the wrong thing. Um, it was one of the titles that you can only get on Heroes. Oh, it was Chaos Lord. It was to put Chaos Lord under Cargo Warfang. So the first time you hit Cargo Warfang, we play the bottom card of the villain deck. Isn't that such a great title to put underneath her at the start of the game? So I was slightly worried when I saw that, but thankfully it didn't happen. But that was... that was fine.